The next Hearthstone expansion, Descent of Dragons, was announced during BlizzCon, and there's a lot to cover about this expansion. Who's up for an adventure? It looks as though the League of Evil is planning to finish off their year of shenanigans by resurrecting the father of dragons, Galagrond. He was an evil proto-dragon that the five dragonflights had to unite to defeat. And now he's coming to Hearthstone in the form of hero cards for each of the classes represented by the League of Evil. Priest, Rogue, Shaman, Warlock, and Warrior. During BlizzCon, the Priest, Warlock, and Rogue versions of Galakrond were revealed. With the resurrection of Galakrond, a new keyword has been introduced, Invoke. When a card with Invoke is played, it triggers Galakrond's hero power for the version of Galakrond in play, in your hand, or in your deck. As you can see here, the Priest version of Invoke will add a random Priest minion to your hand, the Warlock version will summon two 1-1 one -one imps, and the Rogue version will add a lackey to your hand. In addition, Invoke will upgrade the impact of Galakrond's Battlecry. For example, the Battlecry of the Priest version of Galakrond destroys one random enemy minion, but if you've played two cards with Invoke, Galakrond the Unspeakable will upgrade to Galakrond the Apocalypse, and his Battlecry will destroy two random enemy minions. If two more cards are played with Invoke, he will upgrade again and become Galakrond Azeroth's End. Scary and his battle cry will destroy four random enemy minions, as well as equip a 5-2 claw, a scary enough weapon. Each version of Galakrond upgrades to its own version of Galakrond the Apocalypse and Galakrond Azeroth's End. Azeroth's End always equips a 5-2 weapon, and it looks as though they will all cost 7 mana and give 5 armor. Now, we'll cover the other versions of Galakrond and a number of the Invoke cards in detail in a minute, but first, I'd like to introduce how we do card reviews on this channel. Rather than a 5-star rating for cards, we ask the three questions Hearthstone players really want to know about these cards. First, would the card fit into one of the current powerful decks, usually Tier 1 through Tier 3 decks, per HS Replay's tier list, which we will call Meta Decks? So, is it meta now? Second, will the card fit into a meta deck once the set comes out? Meaning, if it won't slot into a current deck, is it powerful enough to help make a new deck archetype viable? At least taking into account what has been revealed thus far. So, is it meta later? And three, and perhaps most importantly, is it a card that will inspire or enable crazy, experimental, or meme decks? So is it meme deck worthy? Each card will get a yes or no to these questions. Now, for those of you without a lot of time, there's a time code in the description below to jump to for quick reviews. For everyone else, let's get into the detailed reviews. So the priest version of Galakrond destroys random enemy minions with its battle cry, and the invoke and hero power add a random priest minion to your hand. This combination works fairly well in a control and value oriented deck, and the 5 armor is nice as well. However, the current meta versions of Priest are Combo Priest and Resurrection Priest. Combo Priest would not want to run the Invoke cards, as it would dilute their deck and slow them down, and destroying one random enemy minion is not sufficient to merit including this card. The random minions from Invoke will fill up your hand or potentially hurt the Resurrection pool for Resurrection Priest, so they're not likely to include this either, so this card is not meta now. However, these effects are powerful, and with enough quality invoke cards, I think there's a good chance of a powerful combination coming together to result in a meta deck. So yes, we'll go ahead and give it meta later. Now a fun deck I'm looking forward to trying out is a quest priest with this card. The random minions provide fodder for healing and buffing. Of course, if you complete the quest before summoning Galakrond, he'll replace your hard-earned hero power, so you'll want to complete the quest after playing Galakrond. But it sounds as though the invoke cards will still add random minions to your hand after you complete the quest, giving you even more long game value. The timing and unreliability of these interactions makes me think this won't be the meta version, but it'll lead to some bizarre games, so we'll give it meme deck worthy status. Next, let's look at the rogue version of Galakrond, Galakrond the Nightmare. 
His base battle cry is to draw one card and make it cost zero mana. When upgraded, he will draw two or four cards, reducing all of their cost to zero. And his invoke and hero power is to add a lackey to your hand. We all know how influential lackeys have been since they were introduced. And this is a perfect time to introduce the final lackey that will be joining the lackey package. This is the Draconic Lackey. His battle cry is to discover a dragon. The spells from the Ethereal Lackey, the other lackey with discover, have been very influential. While it doesn't feel nearly as powerful, it will help ensure that dragons descend into a lot more games, even if the decks aren't built with dragon synergies. As with all the other lackey cards, this guy doesn't start in your deck, but instead comes from lackey generators. Okay, getting back to Galakron the Nightmare. He has the potential to be an overpowered sprint, or an alternative and or extra wondrous wand. Unfortunately, at the moment the only meta rogue deck is Temple Rogue, and 7 mana is a hefty price to pay for 5 armor and playing another card, which would probably be cheaper in the first place. Other than the 1 mana card covered soon, adding more Galakrond activators would dilute the deck's overall effectiveness, and almost no cards would benefit from playing this first, only Eviscerate and Edwin. But they're usually meant to be finishers or early pressure cards, so this doesn't make it into current meta deck. That being said, the power of this card draw, when combined with the burst potential possible with lackeys, as we've seen with Quest Shaman, makes me think that we will see a meta deck which includes this. I don't see it quite yet, but I believe someone will make a meta deck which can effectively utilize this impressive combination of effects. Speaking of impressive effects, I can see some fun games with the Spirit of the Shark as a Battlecry Rogue with this and the speed of drawing through your deck, though not as fast as Myra's Unstable Element, may enable some bizarre games where we can combine Shadow of Death, Togwaggle Scheme, and Desert Obelisk to summon a bunch of obelisks onto the board more reliably, and maybe even multiple times. Can we make Desert Obelisk meta? I'm gonna say no, but it'll be fun. Now on to the last of the Galakrond versions which were revealed during BlizzCon, Galakrond the Wretched for Warlock. This wretch likes to summon demons, and his battle cry will summon one, two, or four random demons depending on which level of upgrade he's at when played. His invoke and hero power summon two 1-1 one, one imps. While interesting, he feels like the weakest version of Galakrond thus far. He doesn't fit nicely into any of the current meta versions of Warlock decks, and his invoke and hero power are something that Zoo and buff decks would like to include, but at 7 mana, Zoo decks hope to have already won or have a massive board. Non-Zoo decks which would consider this are likely not powerful enough to be meta decks later either. However. We can make a Darkest Hour and Plague of Flames control deck, which might even use an expired merchant and some other tools to do some really fun and unusual stuff. So while it probably won't be meta, we can certainly build some meme decks with this. Oh, and Jumbo Imp could actually see some play now. Now, the Galakron cards are only upgradable with invoke cards. So let's look at the invoke cards which have been revealed. First up is the only priest card class invoke card which was revealed. Time Rip, a 5 mana spell which destroys a minion and invokes Galakrond. Priest has a lot of ways to remove minions at the moment, but Light Bomb won't be in standard anymore when this comes out. It's like an assassinate, but with a hit or miss upside. As Priest has so many more cost effective ways to deal with minions at the moment, none of the current lists would run this. And unless Galakron lists are so strained for options that they need removal and invoke together to make it work, I don't think this will be meta later either. If Priest were so strained for invoke cards that they have to run this, the Priest version of Galakron may not make it into the meta after all. As for meme decks, the only deck that would use this card as a pivotal piece would be a super hard control deck we might call Destroy Them All. One more form of removal might help our quest Galakron deck survive a bit longer, 
but it doesn't really feel necessary or inspire any memes. So this card fails the meme deck worthy requirements. Now Rogue got an interesting invoke card to start us off. Praise Galakrond is a one mana spell which gives a minion plus one attack and invokes Galakrond. Using a card slot for a plus one attack buff and a lackey might seem really weak at first, but remember, Rogue likes to use low cost spells to cycle through their decks, with Gadgetzan Auctioneer, Prepare Massive Edwin Van Cleefs, and even buff Questing Adventurers. As another lackey generator and a two mana double buff to Edwin Van Cleef, one for the card and one for the lackey, paired with the ability to make an existing minion a bit scarier, current tempo decks might actually consider running this. It's really questionable, but I think it just barely makes it into the meta now category. Banking on the hope that someone will be able to develop a Galakrond meta deck in the upcoming expansion, we're also going to call this meta later, as this is a cheap activator. And what Spirit of the Shark meme deck player doesn't want to buff their Spirit of the Shark to be able to attack the same turn they drop a double battle cry lackey? Sure, this allows us to meme up our meme deck. Inception. Invocation. Inception. <laughs> the other invoke card for Rogue is Seal Fate, a 3 mana spell which does 3 mana to an undamaged character and invokes Galagrond. This can go face as well if the opponent is at full health, and in desperate situations you could even target something on your side of the board when hoping for that last 2 damage lackey. When compared to Backstab, Eviscerate, Walk the Plank, and Vendetta, the mana cost and conditions for this card make it appear very lacking, except for the lackey. This card is far too weak for its mana cost to make it into any current meta decks, and it feels about on par with the Priest's Time Rip in regards to playability in the upcoming meta, meaning it's pretty unlikely to make the cut. And meme decks? Sure, this could make it its way into our Spirit of the Shark, or how many lackeys can we play in a single game deck, but it fails to inspire or really enable a meme deck, so unless this becomes a card that's so bad it's just a meme to play it, this card doesn't earn meme deck worthy status. Not all the invoke cards are spells. Warlocks get the Dragon Blight Cultist, a 3 mana 1-1 one, one, which invokes Galakrond and gains plus 1 attack for each other friendly minion. Now I'm guessing this means it invokes Galakrond, summoning 2 1-1 one, one imps, and then gains plus 1 attack for each other friendly minion, because if not, you will shed bitter tears playing this on an empty board on turn 3. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Even if it is always at least a 3-1 when played, it's tough to say if it could make it into current zoo decks. Paired with an egg version that uses Grim Rally, it could possibly see play, as there is sufficient synergy to swarm and smork, or threaten a big taunt that would otherwise halt the flood. We'll give it a weak mana now status. And for the same reason, it ekes its way into the meta later as well. At least, if Zoo decks can sacrifice a slot for Galakrond, hoping they don't draw him early on. Three tokens for our Darkest Hour meme deck? Why yes, this card can be sacrificed for the memes. And now we turn to another 3 mana Invoke spell, which feels grossly overcosted for the effect. Warlock gets Fiendish Rites, which invokes Galakrond and gives your minion plus one attack. Again, assuming Invoke triggers before the buff, this should produce at least two 2-1 two minions, with the potential upside of buffing five other minions as well. Two 2-1s two for three mana is really disappointing, so you want to use this on a wider board, but three mana to buff plus one attack to minions later in the game doesn't feel like a significant swing. The only time it feels great to play this card is right on three with an already developed board but including it in your deck for the few occasions you can expect it to be influential, even in a zoo deck, seems optimistic. For these reasons, I think this one falls short of meta now for the zoo decks, and it's questionable whether a meta deck can develop for this card once the expansion comes out. While this might find its way into a Darkest Hour meme deck, it doesn't generate too many tokens itself. That being said, when paired with Inferno 
an unsuspecting opponent laughing at a board of tiny imps might succumb to a surprise demon bloodlust burst of damage. We can probably pull it off once or twice out of 20 games or so. So sure, meme on. Of course, not all invoke cards are class cards either. We also get Devoted Maniac, a 4 mana 2-2 with Rush and a battle cry that invokes Galakrond. It's super understated, but in Warlock, it's like summoning a 2-2 with Rush and two one ones, which isn't terrible. A random priest minion isn't very exciting, but occasionally you might be able to involve this into a decent minion with the 7 in 1 lackey you get from it in Rogue. Depending on what Galakrond's hero power in Shaman is, this might give enough value to see play in Quest Shaman as it will get twice the value after quest completion. Though, unless Galakrond's hero power is better than the quest reward, there's a good chance they won't see play in the same deck. Or more likely, current builds of Evolve Shaman would consider running this if the Invoke card were worth it. I'll go ahead and give it a questionable meta now. Unfortunately for this, Evolve will be moving back to Wild before or when the expansion hits, so unless there aren't great alternative invoke cards available, this probably won't make the cut for new meta decks, at least until rotation next spring. As for meme deck worthiness, while a 2-2 with Rush and a random priest minion for 4 mana may not be terribly exciting, a 5-5 with Rush and a random priest minion for 6 mana is palatable. We'll stick this in our Galakrond Quest Priest alongside Batterhead to dominate the board as a risen lord of dragons should. Yeah, okay, Mimon. <laughs> Understated and relatively weak spells seem to be the trend with the invoke cards thus far. I'm guessing the invoke reward is expected to compensate, but what about a 4-5 taunt for 5 mana? Actually, compared with a number of others, this isn't a painful hit. A 4-5 taunt for 4 mana would be decent vanilla stats, so paying 1 extra mana for the invoke effect will probably be worth it with this card. And with taunt, it has the added bonus of keeping you alive while you work on upgrading the Father of Dragons, or setting up your hero power and invocation power plays. So would it go into a current meta deck? It's too slow for Zoo Warlock and Tempo Rogue, and the priest decks this would fit into have better cards at the moment, so for the classes we know Galakrond's hero power for, it doesn't seem likely. Based on what we know so far, no, it would not fit into a current meta deck. What about meta later? It gives time and is decently statted, and the taunt would synergize with a taunt Galakrond warrior archetype if the Galakrond version in warrior would work with the taunt deck. Again, it's actually one of the better statted invoked minions revealed thus far, so if Galakron decks can become meta, I think there will be at least one deck that will want to run this. And if Taunt Galakron Warrior isn't a thing, we will definitely meme it up for a full Taunt and Galakron package anyways. So yeah, we'll give this meme deck worthy status. As we mentioned, quite a few of the invoke cards feel understated for the mana cost, even taking the Galakron hero powers into account, but it looks like we'll be getting some cards that reward us if we've played a few invoke cards earlier in the game. For example, Priest will get Fate Weaver, a 4 mana 3-6 dragon with a battle cry that reads, if you've invoked twice, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by 1. It's a premium statted minion with an Emperor Thurisian quality effect, but generally better as it is immediate and Emperor Thurisian usually dies after one proc anyways. If a current meta deck such as Resurrection Priest could fit a Galakrond package in, I think this would be meta now, especially as it would stack with Emperor Thracian, who is still visiting standard at the moment. And with an effect this powerful, this will definitely find its way into a new meta deck, especially if Priest can get access to a few invoke cards which cost less than 4 mana. I would be surprised if this is not meta later. OTK and meme decks feed off cards with effects like this, as they enable things to be done which generally should not be done. This will definitely slot into a few meme decks. The reward for double invocation in Rogue also has an amazing effect, 
Umbral Skulker is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three, which adds 3 coins to your hand if you've invoked twice. 3 coins to a rogue. The 4 mana card, Wanted, which adds 1 coin to your hand if dealing 3 damage to a minion killed it, and it's awesome play. A 3-3 three, three body which gives 3 coins for 4 mana is sure to see some play. That being said, it's a bit slow for Tempo Rogue. If it were paired with the Praise Galakron card covered a moment ago, and another cheap Invoke card, the payoff of playing another 3 mana card on turn 4 could appeal to Tempo Rogue, but the inconsistency of getting it quickly and the number of cards required to swap out to make this work make me say that this would not be Tempo now. However, the impact of 3 coins or 6 when playing both copies of this card should not be underestimated in Rogue. A Rogue deck able to use this effectively will certainly rise together with Galakrond in the new meta. And what better way to enable our expensive Desert Obelisk Shadow of Death Togwaggle Scheme deck than stocking up on a few extra coins to pay for them or drawing through our deck faster with Gadzan Auctioneer and coins off this. There are so many possibilities with this that a meme buffet is coming for Rogue. Speaking of drawing through your deck quickly, the Veiled Worshipper is here to help Warlocks do just that. It's a 4 mana 5 4 with a battle cry that draws 3 cards if you've invoked twice. She's decently statted, and whether you're trying to get through your deck for Mechathune, Nomi, or Mogu Cultist Glinda OTK, or just want some extra help to finish the Warlock quest, this creepy lady is here to help. With enough swapping out to enable her, a few versions of Quest Warlock might consider running her, but it looks as though most Quest Warlock decks fall just below our meta now threshold, and her cost to enable her in a zoo deck is just too high based on what has been revealed thus far. So while this could change if some cheaper minion invoke cards are released, which Warlock could use, she doesn't quite make meta now status. However, being able to cycle even more consistently without taking damage does enable Warlocks to put together some interesting combos and pull them off much faster or consistently. So while it may be somewhat optimistic, I think there's a good chance someone will figure out a powerful deck which can use her in the new meta. Now if only an affordable card were printed that allows you to shuffle copies of your minions into your deck. Veiled Worshipper could combine with Augmented Elec, Plot Twist, and Arc Villain Rafam to make a pretty consistent imp balming long game legendary minions deck. We'll see if we can pull this idea off, but in any case, her ability to draw 3 or 6 cards with both copies over the course of a game should help enable some bizarre meme decks, so she does earn meme deck worthy status. Of course, with the League of Evil resurrecting Galakrond, the League of Explorers are not just sitting idly by. While not as legendary as Galakrond, each class represented by the League of Explorers gets a side quest. A side quest can stack with a regular quest and is usually easier to complete than the regular quests. Unlike a regular quest, it does not always start in your opening hand. The first side quest we get to review is the one mana Toxic Reinforcements for Hunter. Once you've used your hero power three times with this active, you summon three 1-1 one, one leper gnomes. It seems like a terrible card at first glance, and I could be wrong, but there's some significant upsides to this card. First, let's look at the downside. The two damage to the enemy face from leper gnome death rattles is something you usually want in an aggressive deck, but using your hero power several times slows down your ability to build an aggressive board. Now, a secret Highlander Hunter could consider running it for the ability to cast again with Zul'jin and do some burst damage to close out long games, but even as a Highlander deck, they have more impactful cards they want to play over the course of the game. That being said, Quest Hunter is a tier 2 deck at the moment, and this could serve as a token generator to complete the quest or provide good targets to buff once the quest is complete. Even punishing the opponent for removing your buff targets with 2 damage to their face each time. 
Dropping a knife juggler just before using your final hero power to activate this provides a little bit more damage as well. It's difficult to determine what it would take the place of, but this could actually see play in a quest hunter deck. Due to the synergies with the hunter quest, it may actually be possible to build a viable deck with this card. While hesitant, I'm going to judge this as meta now and meta later. And memes. Is it finally time for Clockwork Automaton and Blackwalled Pixie to come back to standard for a semi-smork, Cobalt Sand Trooper, Lepronome, blow them up deck? Yes. Yes it is. Bran isn't the only one exploring side quests though. Reno is taking the time to learn Draconic. By using mana on spells? Huh. I wish learning languages were so easy. Game logic. Hmm. Though, I guess I don't have any mana to spend, so maybe it's not as easy as I thought. Anyways, Learn Draconic is the one mana mage side quest which rewards you by summoning a 6-6 dragon after you spend 8 mana on spells with this in play. Surprisingly, or maybe not for Reno, you can forget Draconic really quickly, so you can learn it more than once per game if you run uh, or generate multiple copies. This card looks to have impressive synergy with Flame Waker currently back in standard, but the only mages in the top three tiers of the meta at the moment are Highlander mages which don't use Flame Waker. This would be an unlikely inclusion in Big Spell Highlander Mage as it gives a tiny minion to King Feoris and it would be a terrible top deck in a Highlander deck. However, as a cheap activator for Archmage Antonidas, as well as the fireballs from Antonidas quickly finishing the side quest, this might be able to fit into a regular Highlander mage which runs Antonidas. If generating a steady stream of fireballs weren't threatening enough, imagine summoning 6-6 six, six dragons at the same time. Admittedly, Antonidas usually dies right away because he's scary. But being able to summon dragons the following turn by fireballs from a cheap fireball generator makes me think someone will figure out a viable deck for this side quest as well. While the effect is cool and the build around is fun, I think the decks that get built with this will become decent meta decks, forfeiting their meme deck status. This does have interesting synergy with Khadgar, and let me know in the comments below if you have a brilliant idea for a meme deck with this card, but at the moment, I appear to be hitting a barrier when coming up with meme-only decks for this card. Perhaps it's a language barrier? So sorry for the pun. Now, do note that I'm not the only one playing with puns. In addition to side quests, Blizzard decided to equip the League of Explorers with their own Dragon Explorer sidekicks. To start us off, Hunter gets the Primordial Explorer a 3 mana 2-3 dragon with poisonous and a battle cry that discovers a dragon. Maybe concern of infinite cycling of these explorer cards was a motivation behind the nerf to discover mechanics a few months ago. For those of you who don't know or remember, discover cards had a much higher chance of discovering class cards before the nerf. Anyways, this is definitely understated for a 3 mana minion, and while the poisonous effect and value off this card are nice, it doesn't fit very well with any of the current meta decks, so not meta now. And other than the breath card which each class will get and will cover in the next video, this doesn't really seem to have the support necessary to make it viable in the new meta. Now, only a quarter or so of the cards have been revealed thus far, so this could change. But from what we've seen thus far, I don't think this will be a meta later either. However, in an Imrus Control Dragon Hunter, this, and the dragon from it, will be vital to keeping ourselves alive long enough to drop Imrus and fill the skies above the board with overstatted fire-breathing lizards. Mimon. Reno's Sidekick Explorer may win the Snowflipper Penguin, cutest card of the expansion award. We'll see. No. Focus. Azure Explorer is a 4 mana 2 3 mage dragon with spell damage plus 2 and the battle cry to discover a dragon. If the last card was understated, this poor guy is massively so. 4 mana for a 2 3 is painful. Though, 
If Discover did still have a class card bonus, this would be worth running as a Calicos generator in late game oriented decks. As it stands, the current Highlander decks would not benefit enough from this to merit running it. Even with the plus two spell damage to a fireball or two, if you're lucky, from Archmage Antonitis, it wouldn't be worth the tempo loss. Without seeing more of the upcoming Dragon Pool, I'm concerned whether this little fella will be able to find his way into the new meta either. It may be able to work in a freeze and burst style of deck, but the better statted Cosmic Anomaly has been in standard for some time with very little play, so without significant extra value from the Dragon Discovery, this won't make it. But of course, we can and will build a super spell damage unexpected results Cadgar deck just to see what unusual specimens we can flood the board with alongside this adorably cuddly drooling book devouring creature. <laughs> I'd still hug it, but it's not allowed near my manga collection. We also get to see who Elise's companion will be. The Emerald Explorer is a 6 mana 4 8 taunt dragon for druid with the same battle cry as the other explorers to discover a dragon. This is the most reasonably statted minion for the mana cost, and the taunt tag gives me real hope that this will see play. Would this fit into a quest or token druid? Probably not, so I can't say it would be meta now. However, if any class is likely to be able to take advantage of generally high cost dragon minions, the mana cheating class of Druid is probably the best bet. With respectable stalling potential and hopefully some decent synergy with upcoming reveals, I'm going to be slightly optimistic and say I think this will be making its way into the new meta. Is it meme deck worthy? It's a quality minion with decent impact on the board, and while its taunt tag might help stall towards a meme combo, Nothing on this card screams build around or meme deck enabling, so unless a card is printed that needs dragons and or taunts for a meme druid deck, this dragon doesn't get to taste the memes. We've covered 18 of the cards which were revealed during BlizzCon, and there are 18 left to review. Rather than make this one remarkably long video, we're going to break this into two parts now that we've reached a good stopping point. Check out the next video for the remainder of these cards, and stay tuned for more reviews as the rest of the cards for Descent of Dragons are revealed. But now, let's get into the quick reviews. Galakrond the Unspeakable is not meta now, is meta later, and meme deck worthy. Galakrond the Nightmare also doesn't make meta now, will join the new meta, and enables crazy memes. Galakrond the Wretched is not meta now, Probably not meta later, but opens the door for Darkest Hour Jumbo Imp memes. Time Rip actually fails to pass any category. <laughs> Praise Galakrond is a questionable meta now, likely meta later, and will enable the Invocation Inception. Seal Fate doesn't earn meta now, meta later, or even meme worthy status. Dragonblight Cultist ekes its way into sacrificed meta decks now and later, and can be sacrificed for the memes too. Fiendish Rites is not meta now or later, but surprise Imperno Bloodlust will catch a non memer off guard a time or two. Devoted Maniac would likely be meta with Evolve if Shaman's Galakrond is halfway decent, but it's not meta later, though it pairs well with Batterhead and a meme quest priest deck. Shield of Galakrond is not actually a meta now card, but should find meta status in at least one deck, and it is one more taunt for the Armageddillo army. Fate Weaver rocks all categories with a solid yes. Umbral Skulker is not tempo, so not meta now, but is meta later and buys us all meme buffets. Veiled Worshipper is not quite meta now, could be meta later, and speeds us towards memes. Toxic Reinforcements actually shambles its way into each category, 
and will allow Clockwork Automaton and Blackwild Pixie to enable an explosively smorkish meme. With Archmage Antonitis' help, Learn Draconic earns Meta Now and Meta Later status, but there's a serious language barrier to making a meme deck with this. Primordial Explorer doesn't look like it's a Meta Now or Later, but Dragon Control Hunter is coming to snipe some memes. While adorable, Azure Explorer doesn't get to enjoy the Meta Now or Later, but we might see some unexpected results with Khadgar and this cute fellow. Emerald Explorer is not meta now, might be meta later, but doesn't get to join the memes. And that's a wrap. Of course, this is a subjective review, but I'm making some pretty direct predictions. Let me know in the comments below if you think I missed something, or if you agree or disagree with something I said. Subscribe, and check back for future reviews coming soon. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep exploring. See you.